a short example of setting up a topographic image on a Statseeker dashboard. There are some straightforward steps that I follow when I'm doing one. Make a dashboard I can edit, make an image panel, name it, go through the settings from left to right. Once I have one node of each type that I want, duplicate it, place them as I wish, and then I have the image complete. So your desired dashboard could include images in the background. So giving a representation of actually physically where things are. But in our case, we're just going to take a, a straightforward topographic map. I'm starting with the network summary. It's a good dashboard, uh, includes a lot of useful information, but at the moment I can't edit it because it's a default dashboard. So I'll say save as, call it network copy for 4344, save it in the general file. And now I've got an exact duplicate of the network dashboard, except now I can edit and change anything that's on here. So I'm going to add my image panel, image map, it doesn't matter what size it is right now. I can edit it at any stage to suit whatever suits me on my dashboard. Go in and edit. Starting from the left, I'm going to give it a title. And what I want to do is the London office. You can see I've got an error here because I've got no objects on there at the moment. But first of all, I give it queries. I want two kinds of query. The first kind is a device. It's simply going to let me choose devices from the London group. It's going to show if these devices are, have the ping state of on or off. And to identify them, I'm going to use the name. Save that. The fact that the writing here is still bold, it's accepted. My second query is to add interface information. So I go down to interfaces. Again, what I'm interested in is the London group. This is part of the reason grouping is so important, not just for viewing information quickly, but setting up relevant information. This time I want time series fields. And I'm interested in the Rx utilization. And I'm also interested in the Tx utilization. Now for a label, I could have multiple interfaces with the same name. So I'm going to have the device name and the interface name. I don't need any other filters. But so I can, my interfaces that I'm interested in are likely to be high utilization. So I'll sort by those descending and then they'll be near the top of the list. Again, save. Again, my writing text is still bold, should be good. Next, I go on to the image map. I can have a color or an image as I showed you before in the background. I'm just gonna leave mine white for now. I'm gonna fit around the nodes, the zoom control and edit control. I can take them off. It's a cleaner image when it's being used, but for setting up, I want those controls on there. And I've got zoom in, zoom out, add a node, add a link, edit and delete. So my first option here is to add a node. My first query is relating to a device. I want the London firewall, the ping state. The value I get from that is a string. I want it to be an icon because it's a firewall, a firewall icon. Now, to identify things, I'm going to leave the name on, but the field up 
or down. I'm going to take that off because rather than have a word, I'm going to use a color. This is a string. So I'm just going to say if it's up, please make the icon green. And if it's down, please make the icon red. And finally, my drill down. If I click on that icon, I want to go to a dashboard. And for my example, I want to go to the device overview. And I'm going to have a variable device equals the underscore underscore label close curly bracket. So what this will do is the variable device on the device overview dashboard will take the name from here because there's no name, it'll fall back to the entity name. So the device will be London firewall. Don't need to include the time range, but I do want to include the variables and I want to open in a new tab. So I think that's done as I want it. I'll save it. Let's say done. So now I've got one node. And as I mentioned earlier, now what I want to do is duplicate it. So I will select that device. You can see it's got a light blue outline. I want five different devices on here. I'll duplicate again. In fact, I'll have another one. This is the core that I really want to map. Now, as I'm editing, I can choose each device here, click on it. This next device, as it happens, is the London router. I change my device selection and change the icon. This one here is one of the London switches, switch one. That's including the field, I don't want that. And because it's a switch, choose a switch icon, this one is London switch four. I'm going to choose again, the switch icon, don't need to see the field. This one is in the new PS1. So I'll choose UPS icon and don't need the field. And this one is in the new PS2. UPS icon, again, I don't need the field. So I think that's my oh, the router also don't want the field. So I'll save. So that's my nodes. I can say done for that. Now I want to add a link. So start where you like, finish where you like. Once it's done, then what I tend to do is set up this one link so that it's doing just what I want and I can simply copy it. So what I'm interested in here is an interface query. And it happens to be, let me scroll down a little. I can choose the field. This time we've got Rx and Tx. I think it's uh, Rx is going to be the issue. And this is a number. And it's if I scroll down, you'll be able to see better. 
the units because this is a utilization is a percentage from 0 to 100. And I need zero decimal places. Now the line's black and solid, but again, I'd rather show critical information as a color. So from zero to, let's say, 25%, I'd like the link to be green. From 25 to 45%, I'd like the link to be amber. And from 45 and above, I'd like the link to be red. So let's raise that a little. This looks like most of the links I'm going to choose are going to be all red. So I've got a link now. If I want to, I can include the label on that. Um, and what I suggest is you put the labels on. Let me zoom in a little. You put the labels on with something like an offset of 15 and 15. You want them in there. That gives you a little offset from the line so you can still read the values. But to my diagram, I'm not interested in seeing those values. I'll zoom back out. Now I've got one link that's suitable. I'll save. And what I'm going to do is that line is selected. I'm going to duplicate it one, two, three, four, five times. I'm going to go from here to here. My diagrams, I prefer to go normally to the center of each of the icons. But as I'll show you here, if you wish, you can go to an external connecting point, perhaps here. Maybe from here to here. And for the firewall, Here. Now, as long as these points are tied to points on the icons, as I move the icon, the lines will move with them. And then same routine as last time, I choose each one of these links to edit. When the arrow is showing, I can choose which variable it actually is. Whoops. And I can, all I have to do is choose um, switch one. Four. You'll be choosing exactly which is the real interface for your network. For this example, this is a simulated network, so. Oh, mm, that looks very untidy. Now you can click, play with it the way that suits you. But I've made, I would save it. Go back to my dashboard, decide the sizing that suits, make everything fit, and enjoy the ability to view the relative um, view of your dashboard. Okay, thanks a lot.